Metal cutting saws are generally safer than wood cutting saws, mainly because the blade is turning so much slower that if you did slip or do something stupid, your chances of getting cut badly are less. Hi, I'm Chris from Tiger Moth Racing, and today I'm gonna give you a quick uh, look at the vertical metal cutting bandsaw, particularly a couple of ways of cutting round stock and odd shapes more safely. And then I'll show you a handful of other machines that will cut round stock uh, just as well or better and safer than the vertical bandsaw. So let's take a look at this uh, bandsaw. This is the Rutland uh, vertical bandsaw. Um, this machine was built only for cutting metal rather than being a combo wood metal machine like most of them are today. And I just wanted to go through a couple of quick things and show you a few things to safely cut your materials uh, on a bandsaw, a couple of adjustments and tips, things that will make it uh, easier and safer for you uh, with different shapes. One of the first things is choosing the blade. Uh, the blade tooth size and tooth spacing is dependent on the thickness and type of material you're cutting. Generally you want uh, two or three teeth minimum engaging with the material. So this is a four TPI blade, four teeth per inch. So this, I believe, is one inch aluminum 6061 bar, and we have a four TPI blade, so we're gonna have four teeth engaging with that material. Um, that's uh, more than adequate, and usually the larger spacing between the teeth, the faster it's gonna cut thicker material. Um, so I switched to this blade just to show you an example of a basic cut on a metal bandsaw, cutting aluminum with a four TPI blade, very basic and simple. This is Tap Magic for aluminum. Um, I use it for taps and things like that, but also for uh, a little bit on the bandsaw blade and, and places like that where you want prolonged separation of the material, meaning that the material is not going to bond to the teeth of the blade. The second thing is the height of your blade guard. You do want this to be adjusted down close to the thickness of your material. You want just enough room with a little bit of clearance to get your material through and then lock it down there. What this does is it makes the blade more rigid so it's gonna cut more effectively and the blade's gonna last longer. Uh, the second reason would be to protect your hands. There's less room for you to get your fingers into the blade um, so your chances of hurting yourself are smaller. Metal cutting saws are generally safer than wood cutting saws, mainly because the blade is turning so much slower that if you did slip or do something stupid, your chances of getting cut badly are less. You're less likely to lose a whole finger on a saw like this, whereas a higher speed wood cutting saw, that happens uh, fairly often if you make a mistake and slip into the blade. So we just need a little bit. This machine's not really made for coolant, but the Tap Magic will be fine in this situation. So it's a nice long bar. I have plenty to hold on to, so I'm just going to manually push it through here. better to wait until the blade stops before you grab small pieces and move them out of the way. Um, but that's a pretty common operation you'd be doing on a bandsaw is your first setup um, of cutting your stock to the rough size before you're going to do machining uh, or another step. So now we're moving on to a round stock material. It is also aluminum and about an inch diameter. 
you can cut it on a bandsaw, but the big problem is even if you have a big piece to hold on to and you can hold it rigidly, when you go to feed this piece of round stock into the blade, inevitably it's going to grab it from you. It's gonna grab it out of your hands, out of your grip, and it's gonna roll it forward. It's gonna roll it instead of cutting through it. And you might be able to get away with doing round stock on a wood saw, you know, a dowel, a wood dowel, you can cut on a wood band saw without it having that effect um, in small diameters. But with metal cutting saws, I don't recommend it at all. Um, the safest way that I have found that I was taught is using some other method of holding the stock than your hands. Uh, one of the great ways is a small vise like this. Um, this is an old, you know, very generic yard sale vise. Um, just you need to be able to hold on to the material and keep it flat or at least unable to roll on the table. And to be honest, cutting round stock on the vertical bandsaw is not something I do very often. Um, that's one of the next things I wanna show you is some other options and safer ways of doing round stock cutting. So this is another method uh, that's better and safer and easier for cutting round stock and hex and other shapes like that is to use a horizontal bandsaw. Um, this one is gravity feed with a hydraulic resistance on it and uh, you have built-in taller jaws that are fixed right to the table that will hold your part securely without your hands being involved. This is a small cold saw, and this one has a built-in vise that clamps on the material also. So I'll just show you a quick uh, cutting operation on this same material. Okay, so this is one of my favorites. Um, we'll do another video about this guy later, but basically it is a rod parter. And this one will do up to three quarter inch material, I think it is. And all you have to do, this is a piece of the same material, it's aluminum rod. And you slide it through the hole that it fits closest with. Whatever length you want, you can stick it out and measure it. There's a stop that goes on it I haven't set up yet. Um, but you stick it through and then you just pull the handle and it parts it very quickly and easily. Okay, so another option for round stock. Uh, I like to do this for particularly nasty materials, usually smaller diameters that aren't too big. Um, could be a stainless or a hardened material or something like that. Um, I do keep two hacksaws set up. Um, it's a quick, easy, manual way of cutting off stock in the lathe. I have a fine tooth for steel and harder stuff and a larger tooth for aluminum. Cut a piece of wood to keep with your lathe if you're gonna be doing a lot of hacksaw cutting um, because when you cut through the material, it's really hard to not let the blade jump uh, through the material and you can end up going down and cutting on the ways of your lathe. Um, which, if I saw anybody doing that, is a pretty much certain death situation for them. So this is a quick, easy way of doing 
uh, stainless and hardened materials. I'll use the Tap Magic on the hacksaw blades also. This is the steel, Tap Magic for steel. And this way you're using the machine basically to hold on to the material uh, very securely, which helps you cut it. So today I wanted to give you a quick option for safely cutting off round stock on the vertical bandsaw, for example. Uh, there's lots of other ways that you can do it. Um, some of the examples may be using a portable bandsaw. That's great in a vise with uh, small steel stock. Um, you can part off on the lathe. You can do an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. There's all, all are great options. Uh, the reason that I wanted to show you all of these and kind of give you a baseline is to give you some ideas on choosing which tool to use when. And that is a main um, strategy in fabricating and building things is choosing which tool to use for what and when. And sometimes it can boil down to what machine is set up to cut that material at that time, even if another machine may be a little bit better. Uh, it may save time and make sense to just use the machine that's set up. But from a safety perspective, which is what I'm trying to point out today, is to use the best machine that you have available with the best setup and keep your safety in mind because ultimately it's your fingers that you're trying to keep uh, for the rest of your life. I hope it gave you some ideas on different ways of doing your operations in your shop. If you have any thoughts or comments or other machines that you like to use, it would be great if you comment on those. I'm always interested in new machines and ways of doing things and better ways of being creative in our work.